Hi, in this video I'm going to continue on with the last challenge that we were working on with this button grid program. So in this game we're trying to create a button grid that will match all of the colors. And we've created a problem. So if I match all the colors, such as green here, you can see that the message at the bottom of the screen remains as it was before. It says, not all the buttons are the same color, see if you can make them all match. Well, they do match, and the message is not there. So this video is to help you figure out how to update more than one piece of data on the screen using partial page updates. And so we're going to update both a button and the message at the bottom. We'll have to define these as two separate regions and send two pieces of data every time we do a click. And so let's go through the code here and make this happen. So I'm going to start this solution here by looking at the index view. So index view of button. And we're going to scroll down to where we were computing the uh, winning condition. Now, first of all, this is a bad solution that I showed you in the last video. And here's why. The solution includes logic inside of the view, which is just a bad pro programming practice. Remember, there's always this principle of one job. And the one job of a view is to display things. It's not to compute anything, such as calculating a score or a winning condition. That belongs in somewhere else, like in the controller. So I'm going to take out this section here that says all match equals true. I'm also going to take out the section that says let's go through the loop and see if they all match. Take that out. And then we get down to the bottom where there's another if statement and I'm going to take out the if part and I'm going to just leave the statement as it is with a paragraph. And so this is just a basic view. Now I want to put in a div around this area because I'm going to actually update that. So let's give this thing a name. Let's call it maybe message area. And then inside of there we're going to put the text. Okay, so we have just change the index page to now just show something. It doesn't do any computing. So now we're going to change the computing in the controller. So let's open up the button controller and let's go find the section called show one button. This is where we're going to change the code. Okay, so let's first of all set out a plan so that way you know where I'm going because some of this is going to look a little odd. First of all, what we want to do is render a button and instead of just send a partial view back right away, I'm going to save it as a string. That'll allow us to send more than one item. Number two, we're going to generate a second string, and its only job is to tell the user whether they've won or lost. And so this will be the string that says not all the buttons match, or maybe it'll say congratulations, all the buttons do match. So we'll have a string that'll have a win-loss message. Now that we've got these two strings, the third part is to assemble both of those strings into one object. And so I'm going to use JSON. So a JSON object is a very nice way to package two strings together and give them different labels. Once we have that JSON package, then I can send that back as my return value. So still returning one thing, but it'll have two components in it. Then we have to remember after we do all the updates here, we get to the JavaScript page, we are going to have to interpret the results of the data from this controller as a new type of data. Instead of just having a button, it's going to have a button plus the message, and so we'll split that into two pieces on the other end. But let's get started here with generating these things, these two strings. First of all, I'm going to Stack Overflow to find an answer for a question that I put in. So I was searching for how to update two pieces of a page or two sections of a page using one partial page update. And so there are various solutions, but most of them that you'll find online will have a function that looks something like this. There's a function that is going to render a razor view to a string. Now there's multiple ways to do that. And we're just going to borrow this one here because it seems like from my research, this seems to be a common uh, solution to the problem. So what's the goal here? This, this method is going to return a string if you give it a view name. And that's exactly what I want to do. So let's copy this code here and uh, let's t put it into our function here. So let's copying the example. I'm going to switch back into my controller. And after the last item, I'm going to paste in my new code. So let's see if there's some problems with that. And certainly there are. So render view or render razor to a view to a string is going to be the result. 
but we've got a few things we have to import. So it looks to me like uh, string writer. Let's go ahead and import that. So that is using the library called IO. Now we have iView Engine. So a view engine is a piece of code. It's not really a motor. It's, an, it's a piece of code that is what is generating the HTML. So when you return a view, ASP.NET has, has this magical code that we've never looked at, but it's called the, the view engine, and it's what generates a view if you ask it to return a view. And so we're going to now adopt, adopt this so that it, it can be sent back to a string. Well, let's see, what do we need to import to make that happen? So let's go check it out. And it says we have something called uh, ASP.NET Core View Engines. That sounds reasonable. Let's pick that one. And let's see, a bunch of other, those red things went away. OK, View Context. Well, what is that? Let's go see if there's anything about View Context. It looks like it. we've got one here. So rendering is the library. And lastly, we've got helper options. So what does helper options have to do? So MVC view features. OK, so I think I've chosen all of the, ex the appropriate inputs to make the, all the, uh, the libraries uh, now function. So if I were to scroll to the top of the page, I can see that I, am, I imported a whole bunch of things here using ASP.NET Core MVC, rendering, view engine, and view features. OK, now let's keep going. So now I have this ability to get a new view if I provide it with one of these uh, views over here. So let's make a new uh, item here after item one. So now we want to save this as a string, right? So we're going to generate a new value called uh, button string. And we are going to call on this new helper function that we just imported, razor, uh, render razor view to string. Now let's look at the parameters that it needs. So first of all, it says, what controller do you want to use? Well, we're inside of the button controller. So we could put in button controller, or I can just put in the word this to say the controller that you're sitting inside right now. The second thing is, what view are you trying to use as your template or your pattern? And so the view that we're looking at is called show one button. So I look over in my buttons folder and the views, and I find that name. Notice I don't have to put in the file extension or any pathways. It'll find it for me. Then the next one is, uh, what is your model? So the model for this partial view is to say one cell, one square. So I will say that is buttons and the element at item button number. And so this should generate a string that is called button string. Now, for item number two, I want to compute the answer to say, have I won the game yet? Do all the buttons match? And so I'm going to create a flag variable, a boolean. And I'll just call it, did I win yet? Now, I'm going to go through and loop through all of the buttons again. So this is similar to what we did in the previous uh, part of the tutorial. So I'm going to go through zero to the length of the buttons, the li list of the buttons. And then for each button, I'm going to compare the button, the state value, with item zero in the list. So whatever item zero is, whether it's green, purple, red, they all have to match item zero. Because if it doesn't match zero, then they're not all the same. Now, I don't have to use zero as just any, any, any square on the board will work. I'm just going to pick zero because I know that that's at least one valid button. So then if they don't match, then I'm going to switch the value of did I win yet to false. Because if they don't match, then obviously I haven't won. Now, after we've uh, done the computing on this, I can ha have the answer to my question, did I win yet? So let's do an if statement to say, if the answer is true, yes, I did win, then let's create a new string called message string. And I'll just put in some kind of a message that says, hooray, or congratulations, you've done it. All of the buttons match. And then if that's not true, then we have the opposite. So I will put in a friendly message, not to say that you've lost, but I will just say something like, uh, not all the buttons are the same. See if you can make them match. And uh, you can see that they're not defined yet. So this, this message string is just something I invented. I have to declare it. So I'm going to declare that a few lines up and just set it to an empty string. And so now we have a second part, which is the message string. So the first part was the uh, button string, and now the second part is the message string. Now that I have these two variables, I want to put them together into one variable. And so I will just name this thing as package. And so I'm going to define this as a new object, 
and so it's going to be part one is going to be equal to the button string and part two is going to be the message string and so these two together now form a package now lastly we come to part four so part four says return the value so I'm going to specify that I'm returning a JSON string so it's going to interpret this object as a JSON string so it's going to have two properties and when we return it we're going to have to interpret that slightly differently in the JavaScript and so that's part five so I don't have to write anything here for part five but I have to go to another file and do that in the site.js so let's go look at site.js and see what's existing there so I'm going to www root and let's see the JS folder and there is site so right now the code shows that we are expecting to have something here in the return function the success function is data now the data is no longer just the button the data is now a JSON string with two parts so I'm gonna put a note in here just to let me know that I'm expecting data to be a two-part object and it's uh, if you want to see what this is go look in the button controller to see what's going on so now I'm going to change the return type of the or the uh, replacement for the button instead of just data now it's data dot part one so that's the first part of my JSON object the second part of the object I'm going to put into the message area so let's put in another statement that will say dollar sign and then the pound sign with the ID of that area that div is a called message area and then inside of there we're going to replace the HTML contents with data part two and so we're going to still console log this to make sure that we can see what's going on if uh, something doesn't work but let's see what happens this, sh this should run now if I typed everything right okay so we're running the application I'm going to switch to the button grid and let's see if this thing actually works so I'm going to right click inspect and choose the console so that way I can see what messages are coming back from my controller and from the JavaScript okay so we got a page is ready that's good so let's uh, click something I'm gonna try to change let's see green looks like a pretty common color here so if I click here I get two parts to my message now let's expand this the first part shows me some button code the second part says not all the buttons are the same color okay so it looks like I'm getting part one and part two well, let's go ahead and play the game until we get a winner okay I'm so I paused the video I'm coming to the end now let's see what happens here I click and the last green button shows up and it still says at the bottom not all the buttons are the same color what did I do wrong uh, what do I show in the console let's look at the last message and it does say here congratulations all the buttons are the same color so the controller obviously found that I won but the display didn't show up so what did I do wrong let's go check out index because I'm pretty sure uh, I should be I should be working so back here in site JS we are targeting this ID called message area did I spell it right let's go look in the index area and sure enough message area is spelled right oh but I forgot I need to put in the letters ID equals okay so simple but uh, very profound okay I'm gonna fire this application up again and try again so I'm going to select the button grid going to inspect and show the console all right I got the console up so let's go ahead and pick some color that we're going to do it looks like a blue looks like a good choice okay I'm getting close to the end here so let's select the last few and blue is the overall color and it does great congratulations hooray I finally got it so there is a solution for you and you're gonna probably need this in future applications because partial page updates are great for only one piece but as you can see in this situation we want to update two pieces so you could extend this if you wanted to have more than one piece you could just have a JSON object that has part one part two part three part four and uh, then if you get to so many parts you might ask yourself well why am I bothering with partial page updates anyway why not just refresh the whole page and so there will become a point where partial pages uh, are good and only up to a certain extent so stick around let's watch the next video we're gonna keep working with ASP.net and if you're new to the channel please subscribe there's lots of things to learn here at Grand Canyon University